So I think we can start. Rotti and on behalf of Italian Mass Spectrometry Society, I'm really pleased to uh, introduce the first speaker of this round of seminars that we are, are organizing. And today's speakers, of course, is Giuseppe Pieraccini from University of Firenze. He is the director of uh, the Centro Interdepartimentale Spettrometria di Massa, meaning uh, Interdepartmental uh, Mass Spec uh, Center. And I think that most of you guys uh, know Beppe pretty well. He's one of the biggest experts we have in Italy about Mass Spec. And uh, over his career, he had the chance to work on tens, if not hundreds of different projects, uh, including working quite extensively with, uh, uh, in the field of uh, anti-doping. And he's a true expert at this. So it's really a pleasure to have him uh, here today and give us this seminar, which is about a uh, uh, kind of broad overview of sample preparation techniques uh, uh, focused on the following uh, mass spec analysis. So I ask everybody to please uh, uh, let uh, Giuseppe uh, give his talk and then answer will come at the end. Uh, so I'm done basically. So Beppe, I share, I mean, actually I'm transferring you the host and stage is yours, of course. All yours, I'll mute my screen and my mic. Please go ahead. Okay. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for attending uh, this webinar. Uh, thank also to Andrea for this kind introduction. And uh, it is important. I wish to uh, all women a happy March 8th. It's an important date. And uh, I'm very pleased to present uh, this uh, short introductory webinar to the uh, sample preparation. And Ferdinand is not starting the presentation. OK, presentation started. And uh, as Andre anticipated, I'm working in, uh, on mass spectrometry feed. I'm the director of the mass spec center. We are no more interdepartmental, but uh, we are the uh, mass spec facility of our uh, university. Uh, well, in my uh, uh, 30 years of experience, I had the chance to interact with different colleagues uh, operating in uh, different uh, areas and having different uh, analytical uh, problems. And uh, my experience, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, is limited to the only detection technique that I know pretty well, which is mass spectrometry. And so I will try to convey some introductory uh, concepts about sample preparation uh, from the point of view of a person who will then analyze a sample using a chromatographic technique, GC and LC mainly, coupled to uh, mass spectrometry. I will not enter in the discussion of uh, single separate uh, sample prep techniques that will be the subject of the next webinars of uh, Andrea Raffaelli and neither uh, I address uh, the part of uh, proteins uh, that will be uh, presented by uh, Simone Sidori. Well, this is a short outline of what uh, of, of, of the topics I will address uh, in uh, this short uh, presentation. Uh, a few points that serve as a, a, an introduction to the uh, next webinars, but uh, I will start with a definition of sample preparation and then uh, describe its role in the analytical process and uh, sample preparation, the analytical process and trends in, uh, in sample preparation. Well, the first is definition. And uh, I think that Wikipedia condenses in uh, only six and half lines, what I will try with less effectiveness to uh, illustrate in the next minutes. Uh, sample preparation is basically a step in uh, the chemical analysis uh, of a sample. It is only one step, but it is very important as written because it can be very complex and certainly has a, an influence uh, because uh, it influences the, the result of our, of our analysis. Uh, in this definition, meanwhile, the, uh, it is emphasized that uh, unfortunately, 
uh, are very, very rare, the case in which uh, we have the chance to analyze directly our sample uh, to, uh, with our instrumental uh, um, uh, with our instrumental technique, and maybe sometimes also have the chance to analyze it uh, in the site of the collection of the sample. Uh, we can say a zero kilometer chemistry, but uh, the physical nature of the sample may not be compatible with the uh, direct introduction to the chromatographic system at our disposal, and so we uh, or other molecules present, interfering compounds present in our matrices can uh, influence the signal of our uh, analyte and sometimes totally hidden it uh, to, to phenomena that we, uh, the phenomena that we describe usually as matrix effect. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the goal that uh, we can achieve to eliminate the matrix effect or reduce it uh, can be achieved through uh, the application of different uh, operation or uh, and the application of different uh, preparation uh, techniques to provide us a sample suitable for the uh, analysis with our instrument. Basically, for GC and LCMS analysis, in the vast majority of cases, uh, this means uh, to obtain a solution at the adequate concentration and in an uh, adequate solvent to be injected, introduced in our chromatographic system and possibly in the cleaner way as possible. Uh, since I'm primarily um, a mass spectrometrist, uh, let me shortly mention that uh, uh, among the very few cases in which a uh, sample can be analyzed without any uh, preparation are those that can be addressed by, uh, with ambient mass spec techniques. Uh, ambient MS is a set of relatively recent uh, techniques uh, that allows to directly uh, analyze, uh, to directly address the search of analytes, specific analytes present in uh, mostly on the surface of sample. Uh, uh, well, uh, ambient mass spectrometry is uh, mostly analyze uh, um, molecules present in the surface of uh, our sample, but not only. In this review that uh, of Cooks and Takats and other is mainly dedicated to DESI, but uh, is uh, underlines how uh, different uh, ambient uh, techniques uh, are an innovation in mass spectrometry and show the ability to record mass spectra of uh, target analytes in ordinary sample in their native environment and so on. But in a few areas, uh, is uh, there have been rapid and uh, promising developments, uh, for example, such in forensic chemistry or imaging MS. And in these papers, the authors, for example, ask if uh, uh, a perfect match for an happy marriage is ready for uh, for this uh, technique. I'll be back in, in at the end of my talk shortly on ambient MS. Unfortunately, in uh, everyday reality, we the activities of many of us involve a step of sample preparation. So the analysis of our sample require the use of chromatographic techniques and preparation techniques to uh, have an analytical sample. And in general, it was estimated that the sample processing uh, can uh, uh, occupy at more than half of the, of, of the time of an analytical uh, process. And uh, this is the uh, diagram of the various steps of an analytical process. The purpose of an analytical uh, study is to obtain information about uh, the object or substance, some object or substance, and the information could be the chemical composition or uh, structure or uh, qualitative uh, and quantitative information about the, the present analyte. And we can uh, work uh, targeted to few molecules or untargeted to search to see all the molecules present in, uh, in the sample. But uh, despite the sophisticated uh, arsenal of analytical solution that uh, are available, it is, not, it is not possible to find every bit of information 
even from very small number of samples. For the most part, the state of current instrument, instrumentation has not evolved uh, to the point where we can take uh, an instrument uh, to an object and get all the necessary information. So most analysis are still done by taking a part of uh, or a portion of the object under investigation and that is this called sample and analyzing it in the laboratory or at the site if we have a mobile lab available. Uh, but uh, due to the fact that this is a very rare occasion, we have to add a step in this, uh, in this diagram that is the transport of the sample to the laboratory and uh, a, uh, also its uh, uh, storage until the analysis. So from the uh, uh, arrival to the laboratory to the uh, anal uh, analysis, instrumental analysis. And uh, this is a very, a very important step above all if the uh, sample is uh, and the analytes of interest uh, are sensitive because sample pre preservation must uh, ensure that during transport for the place of collection to the place of analysis uh, and also from storage, the uh, the sample remain representative of the original one. And uh, even with the most sophisticated sample uh, prep procedure and the most sensitive uh, instrumentation, data from uh, a deteriorated, degraded sample are uh, meaningless. But uh, before starting the sequence of, uh, discuss a little bit on the sequence of steps of uh, of this diagram, it is necessary to define what is the area in which we are moving and uh, what are the needs that uh, our program requires to ensure a reliable answer. This can be summarized in these five principal questions. So the concentration range of the analytes that may limit the number of feasible uh, methods. Mass spectrometry is one of the preferred detection techniques uh, for analyte at concentration of uh, PPD or PPT or even lower. And the answer to the question of required accuracy, accuracy directly influences the way a method is performed. The improvement uh, in measurement reliability is closely linked to the time required to complete the uh, entire analytical process, including the number of replicates uh, we need, how many control samples, uh, calibrations, and so on. And uh, influences also the amount of sample that is required because improving precision may require a larger amount of sample than uh, it is available. And it is clearly the method must be designed fit to the purpose. And the number of the samples is also important in general, the total number of samples we have to analyze because uh, if there are many samples, we can spend considerable time in calibrating instruments, preparing reagents, assembling uh, 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 equipments and so on. Since the cost of all these operations uh, uh, can be uh, spread over the large number of samples, but if we have to analyze few samples, however, a longer and more tedious procedure involving a minimum of uh, this preparatory operation may prove to be the wiser choice uh, from the economic standpoint. Uh, the knowledge of the qualitative chemical composition of the sample, both for the analyte, uh, chemical uh, characteristic of our analytes and of the matrix, uh, will help in uh, developing an adequate sample uh, preparation. Um, so we need in planning an analytical process to uh, first of all collect information on uh, uh, analytes and matrix and uh, above all the potential interfering compounds in uh, our analysis. We have several databases available in the internet for uh, to obtain some uh, uh, chemical physic physical uh, properties, physical chemical properties of our uh, molecules. Most of them are uh, 
available as measured properties, some other are computed. Uh, I, here I uh, include only a few examples of uh, what is available. These are the principal, Spider, or and so on, uh, Maxon and, and so on. And then we have to verify if official or reference method are available, for example, those for EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, or FDA, uh, or the European uh, Community, and uh, if are available specific guidelines for our uh, analysis, uh, and also if a standard reference material can be obtained to test the performances of uh, our method with uh, a well-known uh, material that, that mimic the one we are analyzing. And then the scientific literature in which you can find books, journals, monographies, monographs, and so on. Uh, they can be dedicated to a generic sample preparation, or we have um, um, articles dedicated to some specific uh, areas of, uh, of application, uh, like this one for cosmetic and personal care, or uh, for imaging pollutant in the environment, uh, or also in uh, uh, new sample prep techniques uh, that moving towards miniaturization or uh, progress in fast sample preparation techniques uh, and uh, everything with uh, a, a, an approach to a more environmentally uh, friendly analytical uh, chemistry, so-called a, a green chemistry. But returning to the analytical step, the first uh, uh, analytical process. The first step is the uh, that of sampling. Uh, the physical state of the sample can be solid, liquid, or gaseous, but are present also mixed phase such as an aerosol or a suspension. And uh, uh, biological uh, matrices, for example, are seen as a mixture. Even a blood is liquid, but contains also a solid uh, particle, and uh, it is extremely important to clearly uh, define the nature of uh, the population from which we uh, the samples are to be selected. We have to define, we have to choose if our population is fin a finite population that has a definite size, like for example, a truckload of apples or a tanker full of uh, milk uh, or uh, a jar of pills, or it is infinite. So uh, one that has a no definite size, uh, a conveyor belt, for example, that operates continuously and from which sometimes uh, samples are, are taken, selected periodically. Uh, a population may be either continuous or comp compartmentalized. So, uh, a continuous population is one in, in which there is no physical separation between the different parts of the sample. Uh, recall in the previous uh, 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 liquid milk uh, in, uh, in a tank, or uh, we can compare uh, this with a uh, truck containing the bottles with the same milk. These are uh, compart compartmentalized. Um, a population may be either homogeneous or heterogeneous, not, not uh, erogeneous, sorry for the mistake. And uh, homogeneous population is one in which the properties of the individual samples are uh, representative uh, of, uh, are the same at every location of, uh, of the material, uh, a tanker of well steered uh, uh, solution liquid, whereas a heterogeneous population is one in which the properties of the individual sample vary with location. A truck full of vegetables, for example, some of them are uh, deteriorated bad. And the sampling plan is not problematic if the population is uh, homogeneous and every individual sample would be representative of the whole population. But uh, in practice, most population are heterogeneous, and so we must uh, carefully select a number of individual samples from different uh, locations. The sampling procedure is often described in, uh, by regulations concerning the parameters to be assessed and the number of samples, how it was to be taken, their quantity is dictated by the homogeneity of the bulk 
of a sample and its size. Okay, there are guidelines uh, based on statistics to make a correct sampling of, uh, the, of our, uh, for example, soil or an orchard or a silo containing, for example, cereal for mycotoxins uh, analysis. But it is fundamental that the sample uh, we took to the laboratory is representative of the original uh, sample. Here I introduced just as an example uh, two figures taken from a JRC uh, technical guide showing, for example, the correct tools to make sampling and how to proceed to obtain a sample that of adequate size for transportation to the laboratory and to prepare aliquot for uh, the instrumental analysis uh, that are well representative of the entire of the original uh, sample. But uh, sampling and storage must, must take into account the physical nature of, uh, of the analytes of interest and sample matrix. And uh, we may lose, oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, ah, okay. So, uh, because of course there is a usually sample preservation is important because usually there is a delay between uh, uh, the sample collection and the analysis, including the transportation to the laboratory. Sample pres preservation ensures that the sample retains its physical and chemical characteristics, so the uh, analysis truly represents the object under study, and. Uh, well, there are many physical, chemical, and biological uh, phenomena that we have to consider uh, and take it in, in, uh, in account that may influence the stability of the sample in general and of the analyte of interest in, uh, in particular, causing, for example, losses, uh, presence of light or, or acid sensitive molecules, or molecules that are easily oxidized by oxygen, so in ambient uh, uh, situation, or degradable by enzymes that are present in the, in the matrix. And very important is also the uh, container in which we put the sample, because uh, uh, this must not add or subtract the enzyme. So we do not have any. Uh, um, absorption or uh, absorption phenomenon on the uh, material of the container and uh, all the steps, nobody, uh, no material must contribute with signals or interfering compounds to our uh, sample. Uh, the same degree of attention uh, we, uh, to the influence of, of this factor must be taken into account during sample preparation. And so we, we have to protect, uh, for example, a easily to oxidize molecule when we extract our sample that uh, in the matrix sometimes there are other components protecting our molecules, but during the extraction, extraction pro uh, procedure, we can eliminate them. And, and so it, is, it will be necessary to add an antioxidizing agent to our sample or during the preparation of, of, our, of, of the uh, extract, for example, from, from a veg vegetable sample, we can also uh, 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 free some enzymes that are present in vesicles and we have to inhibit them if they can uh, uh, degrade our uh, molecule, our analyte of, of interest. But sampling and uh, storage must take into account the physical nature of the analytes of interest and of the sample matrix. For example, we may lose volatile analytes from uh, solid matrices if not properly sealed and stored. An error during sampling and uh, uh, preservation of our uh, sample cannot be corrected in any way and affects the entire analytical process. So unfortunately, as I said before, many or uh, most samples are not ready for a direct introduction into the instrument. 
And so it is then necessary to transform them into a form that is suitable for analysis. And for the introduction in our chromatographic system or in our analytical system, so to obtain a solution of few tens or hundreds of microliters, a volume from which we uh, take the uh, injection volume to be introduced in our instrument. This solution must retain the chemical and physical uh, characteristic of, uh, of the analyte of interest and leading to a chemical form that is suitable for the method of analysis. For example, to resuspend the sample with uh, um, mobile phase composition, starting mobile phase composition of our LC analysis. And uh, so, uh, so uh, at, and uh, also we have to obtain this solution at the uh, correct concentration to, uh, to be able to uh, obtain the correct amount introduced in the system for the uh, detection of our uh, analytes. And uh, it is important that we not add the contaminant or we uh, perform all the sample procedure, uh, avoiding also the cross-contamination uh, between samples. But the main target of our sample preparation is to remove interferences and so reduce the so-called matrix uh, effect. And uh, uh, sample preparation may, be, may include several uh, processes and they depend on the sample, the matrix, uh, and the concentration level at which uh, the analysis needs to be carried out. For instance, trace analysis in very complex matrices, matrices requires more stringent uh, sample preparation than major component uh, analysis. And uh, the considerable development of instrumentation, both in terms of performance, sees of chromatographic uh, separation and sensitivity of uh, mass spectrometers, uh, in, in terms of uh, also ionization sources and interfaces have on one hand helped us in simplifying the uh, sample preparation method. And, but on the other hand, we prompt to the development of new methods for detecting analytes at even lower uh, concentration. The primary objective of sample preparation is to isolate one or several target analytes from the other components of the, of the sample, reducing so the interfering compounds. An ideal sample preparation method should be highly reproducible, ensure good recovery, be accurate and precise, especially if the method is uh, quantitative, and must be fast, uh, so include a limited number of working steps and minimum number of working steps and uh, to support also an high throughput and uh, must be easy to learn so that to the staff training will uh, will be carried out uh, quickly and uh, also be economic a clean extract uh, increases also the life of our chromatographic columns and reduce the ordinary maintenance uh, requirements for the instrumentation. For very high throughput, uh, is uh, the automation plays a very important role and helping also in minimizing all the uh, effect of sample manipulation by the operator. So extraction and clean up procedure are often the bottleneck of in the measurement process and uh, they tend to be uh, slow and labor intensive and in fact in time and labor intensity are the workload where the most reported critical problems in a survey published in LCGC North America uh, refer this refers to the year 2013-2015. Uh, the second uh, critical problem is the cost of the analysis and to my knowledge the situation is not changed so much uh, since the 2015. 15. And uh, these problems are relatively common to uh, several uh, different areas. This is, for example, the distribution of the respondents in, uh, in the survey. And uh, the physical nature 
of the sample show that mainly we have liquids to be dealt with and uh, that is in for for uh, some point of view the easy matrix to be uh, uh, treated but uh, there are many techniques that are used and processes that operators have reported in this survey uh, that they are using methods and techniques that they are using in their uh, everyday laboratory work. These range from the uh, simplest weighing or filtration or dilution operation, simple in relative terms clearly, and to extraction uh, using classical liquid liquid uh, technique or SOXLET or using preparative uh, chromatography or accelerated solvent extraction and, and so on. But other data indicate that more than 45% of sample analysis analyzed required from three to six step of, uh, of analysis and uh, of, of a preparation to arrive to the uh, uh, analytical instrument and uh, thus considerable uh, amount of time and human resources are dedicated to sample preparation and depending on their nature and uh, concentration level co-components of the sample matrix can influence the quantitation of the target analyzed during subsequent liquid chromatography or uh, mass spectrometry or tandem MS experiment if not removed pri uh, prior to the uh, analysis. And uh, this is the greater the number of steps that uh, we have to perform and the greater the risk of introducing errors of varying percent weight and nature in uh, our analysis. From this uh, survey from um, Ronald Majors, that is available uh, from Agilent, different sources of error emerge, which may be due to human factor, 19%, uh, or sample preparation and analytical measurement process, that is sample processing, the 30%, for example. Sample, uh, sample processing is clearly the one with the greatest uh, influence in uh, on the error uh, of of, the, of our chromatographic uh, analysis and uh, each step of a sample preparation has its own error and uh, let's say inaccuracy and to make accurate and precise measurements it is important when designing a um, and setting up an analytical procedure to identify the various sources of uh, error and the best improvement uh, to accuracy, uh, inaccuracy or precision can be achieved by minimizing the error in all these steps. I will not go into the discussion of the different sources of, of error from occasional errors uh, linked to human error or incorrectly executed procedures or random and systematic error. But random errors give rise to data that vary in a non-reproducible way from one measurement to the next and contribute to error propagation. In the case of sample preparation, the yields of each individual process in the sample preparation chain, for example, contribute to this error and determine the standard deviation of our measurement. So to make and accurate and precise measurements, it is important designing and setting up an analytical procedure to identify the various sources of error and try to minimize their effect and monitor also the performances of the sample preparation steps we apply. And also the instrumental variability. In, uh, in this case, to minimize and control many of these steps, we use an appropriate internal standard or a mixture of, uh, of internal standards. And uh, it is strongly recommended that they are added as early as possible in the chain of the preparation uh, as soon as possible, both for qualitative and above all for quantitative uh, analysis. A valid internal standard is used to monitor 
the uh, variability in analyte losses, uh, ionization efficiency, matrix effect uh, that uh, are translating LCMS in ionization suppression or enhancement, and uh, an analyte and an internal standard must have comparable, if better if identical, ionization efficiency be lost in identical percentages during the procedure and be identically affected by matrix effects. A unique feature uh, of mass spectrometry is that it allows the use of stable isotopes labeled standards. In practice, we have the chance to uh, add the same molecules, the same target analyte of interest to uh, the sample for analysis because the analyte and the deuterated or uh, um, stabilized of labeled internal standard as the almost perfect overlapping of chemical and physical properties, the same behavior in chromatographic uh, retention and uh, the same yield during the ionization uh, process uh, using above all the atmospheric interfaces like uh, electrospray and uh, a PCI. And uh, in this case, we have the chance to follow the fate of, the, of our uh, uh, analyte during all the analytical process in a reliable uh, way. But, uh, well, coming back to development of sample preparation, clearly the complexity of sample preparation and therefore its specificity is closely are related to the complexity of the metrics, but also to the sensitivity and specificity of the detection method that uh, we are using. Unfortunately, a greater specificity in both cases is combined with uh, increased costs for instruments and detectors. It's better to use MSMS or high resolution MS or a, a spectrometer, including also ion mobility, for example, to obtain a very uh, clean signal of uh, our analytes. But clearly, the instrumentation cost goes rapidly. Uh, with the uh, development of high performance uh, UHPLC or UPLC columns and high sensitivity instrument, many uh, methods are now proposed in the literature uh, with limited sample preparation, which may be sometimes limited to a dilution or protein precipitation step. In uh, this table are uh, shown the classes of common components of various animal or um, vegetable matrices, uh, biological matrices that uh, we can uh, 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 and what are, sorry, the um, interferences that uh, are principally removed with simple operation uh, and sample preparation techniques applied. So to reduce again the uh, matrix effect uh, and uh, uh, reduce their, uh, the influence of these unwanted uh, molecules on uh, the performances of our method. But, uh, if we have a target method, we can also stress the sample preparation to enhance the signal of, uh, of the analyte of interest, but a different uh, approach must be dedicated to untargeted approach like uh, untargeted metabolomics. Well, uh, in this case, we do not want as uh, indicated in uh, this slide taken from uh, Diana Vuchkovic, uh, we want that our sample prep is unselective uh, to have uh, to maintain the um, an elevated number of metabolite features, but removing the main interferences like proteins or the ones indicated in the previous slide. And we must obtain a good solvi solvidization uh, for uh, the metabolites uh, of interest, uh, having sensitivity and minimize metabolite degradation during the preparation to uh, reduce, so reduce uh, the time and the efforts in the uh, handling of the, of the sample and then arrive to the uh, analytical uh, instrument. In this case, 
clearly automation can help to maintain a high uh, uh, productivity and so an high throughput in this uh, um, kind of, uh, of analysis. But uh, okay, we are mm, near to the uh, conclusion. It was too fast. But in uh, coming back to the uh, trends in sample preparation, so discuss the sample preparation, uh, a rapid look at what are actually the trends in, uh, in this field. Uh, the demand is to uh, develop methods or sample preparation uh, techniques that ensure sensitivity, robustness, effectiveness, and high resolution in reduced analysis time. And uh, recent trends in sample preparation, so focus on how to miniaturize the, and simplify the sample preparation process, increase the sample throughput, and uh, also uh, in uh, the development of new selective solvents, uh, and if possible, to announce the uh, coupling uh, um, of sample preparation technique with the detection uh, system. So, uh, for example, the miniatur miniaturization of the process is both in terms of quantity of consumed sample and in reduced volumes of uh, uh, adsorbent phase uh, reagents and solvent that are necessary for, the, for uh, this process. For example, now we are growing the application of uh, uh, 96 well SP in 96 well format it is now widely used and some in some cases also the 384 format uh, is growing but uh, okay the the target is to also to obtain uh, methods that are more environmentally sustainable also for sample preparation to reduce the environmental uh, impact uh, this step could uh, explain the growing diffusion of analysis methods that are based on a solvent free technique or where the uh, or dosing uh, using very low amount of, uh, of solvent these techniques are well suited to a high degree of automation in some cases uh, almost uh, we can reach almost a total uh, automation for SPIMI, for example, so the microstruction, we have now available uh, robotic sample preparation devices that are commercially available, able to perform several procedural steps, uh, eating, mixing, uh, changing also the fibers to extract the sample, add internal standard and coupled online with the detection system, the LC or GC before our mass spec. Uh, other solutions that are, uh, have been proposed in the last year to tackle sample preparation are summarizing uh, this slide. The catchers, as the acronym implies, uh, in, they are easy, fast, and cheap solution for sample preparation. They can be used for a wide range of applications with minor modification. Uh, the SP, SPE based on 96 well plays make possible to process small sample volumes and obtain purified extracts in small volume, already suitable for the injection in uh, GCMS or LC, or mm, they can uh, be quickly evaporated and then resuspended without the need to transfer the volume in the uh, vial for uh, the, the auto sampler. Uh, online SPE and turbulent flow chromatography are also used to increase the throughput and reduce manual sample handling. New, uh, the development on new uh, molecular imprinted polymers, even with their uh, limitation, we are still discussing of some sometimes of a memory effect of this material, but the new polymers are uh, developed for targeted analyte extraction of a class of strongly structurally similar uh, molecules. And then the microextraction techniques in which we have, again, reduction of volume 
of sample and solvents. And uh, this diagram lists the many proposed solutions in uh, microextraction. I take it from uh, a recent article published in a Chinese language uh, journal. Unfortunately, I can't read Chinese, but uh, this diagram seems to be comprehensive of, in describing the wide range of possibility that today exists for uh, and include some of the techniques that we saw earlier in the uh, solvent-free technique. Uh, another paper that could be interesting, a mini review of uh, by Bid and co-worker is, uh, is propose some solutions for preparing biofluid samples uh, are well illustrated with a view to developing methods for detecting trace, trace level concentration of drugs, metabolites, and endogenous uh, compounds, and how to deal with sample preparation to overcome some uh, uh, common problem and reduce or eliminate the major interference from, from these matrices. Uh, as I told, and also there is a development in uh, ambient MS. I would like to point out this recent uh, publication in analytical chemistry, which deals with uh, the development of these techniques and their possible uh, applicability in uh, various sectors, uh, toxicologic, uh, clinical, uh, environmental, and so on. And uh, in uh, this figure taken from the same paper, uh, there are show that many sectors can be interested in uh, ambient uh, technique and solution, including, for example, paper spray that can be uh, uh, really uh, coupled to the uh, uh, dried blood technique for uh, sampling. And uh, sometimes we have uh, some commercial solution really available for uh, the, uh, the analysis of our biological samples directly without any uh, manipulation of the, of the sample. And uh, another uh, advantage, advantage of, uh, of the developing of uh, small techniques, miniaturized uh, sample preparation techniques uh, and uh, instrument is that we can develop uh, mobile instruments. We can take the instrument to the site in which the uh, sample is, uh, is located. But uh, uh, this okay. Uh, probably I've not chosen the right example of uh, um, mobile laboratory, but this is Providence that actually is on uh, on Mars. Uh, but this is a mobile laboratory fully automated. Uh, even and, and probably is, is not the correct example because uh, in the description of the method there are no uh, mass spectrometer scenes in uh, in in this uh, in these small but very uh, important vehicles that is actually on on Mars, completely automated. Even if okay, guided from Earth, but with a, a very a lot of uh, automation. And uh, okay, uh, thank you all. I con I conclude my my talk on this short uh, introduction to sample prep, and uh, I'm available for questions and discussion on on the team on the yes on the argument. Okay, thank you very much, Beppe. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Beppe. I think it was an extremely interesting uh, presentation. Personally, I particularly appreciated the work that you did in uh, putting together data on actually users, I mean, statistical investigation from and feedbacks from users of the sample practice techniques. Very interesting. Uh, is there any question from the audience to Beppe? Okay, actually, uh, I have a curiosity. Um, just to make sure we are not the only <laughs> lab facing this issue, but uh, while uh, working on a say new analytical method, uh, it happens very frequently that you go 
uh, literature, I mean, what is currently known about a given compound from a, a, a matrix. And sometimes you find very different <laughs> extraction sample prep protocols, but I mean really different. Yeah. Uh, day to night. Uh, and uh, I mean, I'm okay. We all know about the reproducibility crisis that <laughs> all science is facing, but this is becoming crazy, uh, in my opinion. Do you have any, what's, what's your view on this? Oh, well. The only answer is trial and error. You try yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this is the, the first uh, suggestion that I have in these cases. So, uh, uh, okay. Uh, the first thing is to look in, uh, uh, in your uh, column uh, disponibility and uh, what you have in your lab for uh, as workstation or uh, similar to prepare samples and try to adapt the uh, literature method to your uh, sample and trying to mimic or at least adapt as much as possible the result and control if uh, they are suggest the, a correct procedure and above all if they highlight correctly uh, what are the critical steps in all the procedure because sometimes uh, you can find that there are some critical points in the sample procedure that are not uh, emphasized at least on, on on my opinion in the correct way in the literature present uh, or, or published on the on the problem uh, but okay the, the only chance you have if you do not have any uh, personal experience or colleagues that can uh, um, share with you their experience uh, on the same problem is try uh, try apply one procedure or another uh, clearly starting from the one uh, you are more familiar with, and, and then to the new new one. I, I remember when I started to work in uh, solid phase mix extraction too many years ago. Uh, well, I was really astonished astonished by the performances of this method. I spent a lot of time, and I found few years later, a lot of people say, "Wow, this is the universal solution for many problems because it's easy, rapid." and so on, but uh, okay, mm, not always is the correct answer. And sometimes you need to find very, very low concentration, uh, molecules at very, very low concentration, uh, and you need to stress the sample prep more than uh, is suggested, for example, by, by literature. And above all, what is the detection system that you have available in your lab? Uh, an instrument that is on the, uh, on the top of performances or some instrument with a technology of 10, 15 years ago, and so with limited sensitivity and performances. Clearly, you have to change your, your approach to sample prep if you have an instrument having not enough sensitivity and not enough uh, chromatographic performances to ensure you to reach in an easy way the level of, of concentration uh, that uh, is required for your analysis. We can end our meeting here. Thank you very much, uh, Beppe. And I invite uh, everybody who is here today to stay tuned uh, with uh, I must uh, social media and newsletters because we have, uh, uh, I mean, a set of, uh, of uh, webinars that have already been scheduled uh, basically every Monday for the whole uh, March and April. So thanks everybody. Thank you very much, Beppe. And that's it. Okay. See you soon.